right. Hello, everyone. My name is Araceli Garcia, and welcome to the podcast again. So for those of you who don't know, I have been a high school English teacher for almost 25 years. I recently left the classroom and now serve as a teacher on special assignment, supporting middle school and high school ELA classrooms. Um, but I decided to start a little podcast here on the side just to kind of share the stories, the behind the scenes stories of some of our educators, activists, community members, people who are just doing great things to promote literacy. And I do this to share it with other educators, with students and advocates. And so today I'm so happy to have Elisa Vasquez, who is also a family member, but mm -hmm. she has a long history in a, in a type of work that might be new to a lot of people. And that is a zine, the zine world, short for kind of magazine, or mini magazine, if you will. And she's going to tell us a little bit about what this is and how maybe teachers can use it in the classroom. And so I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Lisa. Lisa, tell us, you know, what, how did you get involved and what in the world is the zine? Go ahead. Okay. Um, well, I think I first started really to learn about zines about uh, 12 years ago, at least 10 years ago, because I, I think I made my first zine about 10 years ago. And it was a collaboration with my best friend, Suemi Guerra. And she's really the one who, I would say, introduced me to zines. And, and I, I learned a lot about zines from her. And she um, has been making zines also for a long time, longer than I have, for sure. And so, yeah, she... She began, um, like I was, I was saying before, she had written a novel, but instead of waiting to get it published, she just decided to um, release the novel like chapter by chapter in zine form. So each issue of, of a zine that she created was like a chapter in the book. And I'm go ahead and show just a little visual so those who are very new and I know I was very new to you know find trying to find out what what is this I happened to hear about it see it on, online as other teachers across the country were were talking about it and so I'll just kind of give a little quick peek so what are zines so you know Lisa what is it that we're seeing here <laughs> Yeah, so uh, what you have there are examples of what look like mini zines, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, but a, a zine can come in many different formats, different sizes, you know, um, could be just like a black and white photocopy of a zine, it could be in color. Um, really, zines are, I would say, they can be about anything, any topic, they could be... Um, any size i have several examples of like a mini zine to like a like a like a regular zine where it's like you just take a regular sheet of paper and fold it in half and then just staple it together um but really like this is kind of like a medium size zine like it could come in any like size and and it could be uh how do you say stable Mm -hmm. it could be folded and I, I will be showing an example of a mini zine later on like a little quick tutorial but this is like a uh, one sheet of paper um is how you make a mini zine and it's just the way you fold it together is what creates the little book when I was doing a little bit of my research, uh, this goes way back, right? This is a yeah. history mm -hmm. behind it. Um, I, I just, you know, saw a little bit, but what can you tell me a little bit about the history of this, you know, hands-on, do-it-yourself kind of magazine uh, pro right, project? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I'm not an expert on the history, but yeah, zines do have a very long history. They've been around for a very long time, for decades, I believe, like since the 1930s. Mm -hmm.
I mean, as far as I know, zines could be about any, anything you want them to be. You can make a zine of photography of, of your poetry, of um, like a story, like my friend, you know, her novel, um, it could be about your drawings, you know, art. Um, it could be like about a, a, a unique topic mm -hmm. or a, like a, something that's your passion, like cooking, gardening. It could be about politics. It could be about culture. You yes, know, yes. It, it could be about anything. It could be about music. <laughs> I love, I'm just kind of sharing here the, the images that I found of different people who have, you know, done these again. I love the idea that you don't need a publisher and you don't need someone mm -hmm. to say, yes, you can, you know, print this or, hey, your drawings are not nice enough or, right? Like, no, this is all self-directed. Um, yes. You have something to share, share it. Um, yeah. And people can make photocopies, right? Phone. They can make photocopies and... Oh, yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. like, I think what makes a zine is is the do-it-yourself, but also you it's just like a you just make photocopies of it mm -hmm. and it's just a very simple like do it yourself process mm -hmm. and i think that that's like a really what makes what makes zines like special because like you you totally make it yourself you know you yeah. create it yourself and you know zines are supposed to be, just be like photocopied they don't have to be anything fancy or anything expensive you know, just on any, it could be on any type of paper. Yeah. Um, low, yeah. low budget, right? Just, uh, even budget. Like, yeah, I found yeah. some for a uh, little directions for, for younger kids. And so I saw a blog where this person just had kids write about their favorite ice cream. And there were so many, even though it's the same topic, each kid has such creativity. Um, you know, I love this one right here when you can't decide on one flavor. So they, <laughs> they have this one, nice. here, right? Nice. And, <laughs> and it doesn't have to be like, you know, so some kids say I'm not good at drawing and it's not about the drawing, right? It's about just exactly. Telling yeah, it doesn't, right. mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't have to be about drawing at all. If you don't want it to be, it could be about photos. It could be about your words. It could be a collage. Um, yeah, it could be a collage of, of pictures that you find. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I was I was sharing, and that's beautiful, right? It, again, you know, yes, we can post things on social media. However, you know, one of the issues with social media is uh, digital fatigue. Yeah. You know, nowadays we have computers in the classroom. We have kids on their cell phone all the time. They come home and maybe they go on the video game. Maybe they zone out on, on Netflix. Maybe they continue doing, you know, more cell phone. Why is this? you know, the actual physical act of making something, why do you think it's satisfying or, or important? Wow, that's a good question. Like, I guess I never really understood it until I actually made my own zine. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. like for a couple of years, I was watching my best friend make them and then I followed her. She would invite me to these like zine events where people come together and they sell their, their, their zines that they have made. And um, it was a really cool experience to see, like, um, meet these other creators and, like, see the type of zines that they've made and um, all the different, like, people and kinds, like, types of... Uh, yes, let me share that, that image here. So it's not only the sharing when you're, let's say, selling it or exchanging it, but even the making of it, right? Yeah, the process of making it. So, like... So finally, like, um, my, my friend and I, my best friend and I, like, decided we were going to collaborate on making a zine together. Mm. And it was a very silly idea <laughs> we had. We called it all about the boys. Yeah. And we made a few different issues in, like, a, you know, um, over the years. And the, the thing about the zine is, like, we would hang out a lot, of course, and we would go to a lot of events and shows we both love music and we both love live music and following local bands and like we would kind of just like analyze people and analyze these guys that we will see and there's their sense of like um fashion or their style and like then we started to notice like i, I mean i want to be <laughs> stereotypical <laughs> but like you know these different types of people observations yes and so we kind of just started 
or I started drawing these um, different boys that we would see and like what they would wear. We would point out like a specific hat or sweater or band t-shirt. And yeah, that's what the zine was about. And it was, it was the first one that I did, which was a lot of fun. And I collaborated with her. Here's another one that we did and oh, my little nice. yeah. drawings. So it was cool because like she got to to write, like make the the narr their narration on like the dialogue for the zines. Mm -hmm. And then I got to draw the pictures. Mm -hmm. So you can come out right. She's more of a writer, I'm more of a drawer, I guess. <laughs> and um when we when we were making it. You know, I went over to her house one night. We started making it. It, it was it was kind of quick and easy. And then we started printing it. And that's when I started seeing it come to life in, you know, the paper form and the booklet form. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so cool. I was so excited. Like, it just made me so happy and excited, uh, like, creating the physical copy of it. Yeah. And then getting to know that I was going to get to share it with friends and, and possibly, you know, share it at a zine festival yeah. And um I don't know, it just it, it was it was a really it was a really nice feeling for lack of a better word, but um it, it got me hooked on like making zines, you know. I think, I think there's it, something really, really special about, you know, again, something that is tangible that you can touch and that you can, you know, have a conversation with someone else. And uh, I've seen this because I do design based learning, which is a hands on method that I use in teaching and kids would just make things out of recycled goods, you know, straws and, and paper cups. And and all of a sudden, these very shy kids would, would come alive in my class and they want, wanted to talk, talk, talk. And then that talking led to, you know, writing. And then the writing led to like wanting to do research and, and it just opened the doors wow. to, to learning. Mm -hmm. And so like, again, you know, like I said, for those who don't like to draw maybe or don't you know want to, you can cut out pictures right? as, you, as I see here, like your little exactly. workshop um, yeah. magazines and all kinds of things, right? Yeah, so the pictures you have there of like the workshop that I um, hosted or um, organized with my best friend back in 2019. Mm -hmm. And we brought like a bunch of paper and supplies, you know, scissors, glue, markers, pencils and and magazines, just random magazines that I had laying around or that I had collected um, for people to use, you know, to cut out pictures or words and make collages or, or use as a as a as an image for mm -hmm. you know creating their own mini zine and people were really creative people got really creative on that workshop um it was really cool to see what people came out with in the end yeah and yeah. um yeah it seemed like everybody um had a great time making their zine and was really happy in the end like you know making that final product and like I, I think every single person that came to that workshop had like never made a zine before. Mm -hmm. Like, well, of course, but I mean, like never didn't really know much about zines mm -hmm. and like had never made one, obviously. And um, kind of just, just decided to come and experiment with us. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. You know, right. Because, yeah. like they, maybe they're not considered themselves like a super creative artistic person but yeah. what, and you know what they, they they created some really cool uh, I always I uh, always would hear you know when I would say when okay you know we're gonna get creative and you hear these kids just you know say oh I'm not creative and you know I I always remember this great quote um where it says you know we don't grow into creativity we grow out of it and sadly, I feel like, you know, when we're really young and you see those little five-year-olds and they're drawing outside the lines and they're imagining this whole other world, right? And slowly as we get older, we, you know, we kind of, you know, quiet that down. Like, oh no, people are going to think I'm weird. Oh, I'm not supposed to color outside the lines. And so we kind of start to become maybe almost robotic. And I think that's causing, you know, people not to feel who they really are. And so I, I love this idea of that unleashing right all the different yeah that is very true um because i i think everybody is creative yeah. everybody's creative you kind of just have to tap into it yeah. and yeah i mean when i was a kid like i'm still cre a creative person now but i was even more creative when i was a kid when i was younger you know like thousand times more now as an adult like yeah it's like 
I have a, you know, I'm more self-conscious. I have, you right. know, I, I, ha I have fears, you know, I, I, I sometimes can be intimidated or scared to be creative. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's, it's a little harder now as an adult to, yeah. to tap into that creativity, but zines are definitely a great way to, to help. Well, you're not you're not the only one who's out there doing this right and if those of you who are interested in researching this it, it like I said it started way back in the 1920s and 30s where mm -hmm. people said hey we don't need a publisher and we don't need the permission we're going to you know give our word out and then in the 60s even through the music I love the punk girl music uh, genre really took hold of this uh, zine world and there's conventions. Uh, tell us a little bit about conventions that yeah. are out there. Yeah, they're called like zine festivals. And I I think, I, I want to say, um, you know, in more recent times, the Alley Zine Fest, the first one was back in 2020. I didn't attend that one. Um, I think this was um just as I was learning about zines or I wasn't actually no I wasn't in LA I was in Atlanta studying art but um I didn't attend it but my best friend did and it was very small I I, I think if I believe uh, if I remember correctly it was at the at the last bookstore in downtown LA mm -hmm. they held the first LA zine fest there so it was very small scale and from there it just grew every year it just grew and grew and they and they kept they kept um, doing it every year and it, and every year would be in a different location. And so, yeah, Alizine Fest in 2012, I, I feel like started this, this movement of zine fests. And um, now like almost every major city in Southern California has their own zine fest. Cause yeah. since there's been Long Beach Zine Fest, o OC Zine Fest, San Diego Zine Fest, um, there's San Fernando, Zine Fest, Claremont Zine Fest, um, even there's even a Tijuana Zine Fest, you know, in Baja California. Yeah, that's so, beautiful. Artists coming together, all types of you know languages, and I think through you know this medium of you know online, you can also share your work with others. But the fact of getting you know talking to people face to face, uh, that's such an important skill especially for our young people, you know, it makes me kind of sad sometimes when I see young, young kids on the cell phone or on the little tablet and they're not running around and they're not interacting. And I worry about, you know, how are they building those social skills that are so important? Um, and so here, this is, I, I forget if I think this is the San Francisco one. I was like, wow. So people yeah. sell these, but I'm sure, you know, <laughs> I don't know if they're making a lot of money, but What's the joy of, of, you know, making this and then, and then selling them or exchanging them? What do they do with these? Yeah. I mean, honestly, like if, if you're not a super famous person, you're not making a lot of money off of zines, <laughs> but <laughs> it's not really why, I don't think that's why people do it. People do it because they love to do it and they have a passion for it and it's a way for them to express themselves and, and share, uh, you know, themselves with the world, you know, depending on what your zine is about. It could be like a zine that, you know, every issue, like it could be a zine about one topic and, you know, you, you put out several different issues or each mm -hmm. zine that you put out could be a totally different topic. Like, I think every zine that I put out has been a very different topic or a lot, or some of it related to music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you said that in the music, that the music world actually has really gotten a hold of, of zine making. Uh, tell us a little bit about, cause you're involved with music too. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, I have my own band. We're called Pizza Stains, and um, the basis I, I started the band about five years ago. And when I first started that musical project, I always wanted to incorporate the other arts that I love, the other passions that I have, which is like art and drawing and making zines. And so um, I, I created a, a mini zine for about our band it's called well it's just called like pizza stains the number one um issue number one um and yeah. it's just like a little mini zine that i like to hand out at our shows we play shows just to have somebody to take home like it's we just hand it off for free for people to take home with them so they could remember us or they could you know just share that part of us with others 
and I hand drew the whole thing wow. and it has like a pizza theme to it. So I put Domino's annoyed for people who are old enough to remember who he is. <laughs> so I did a little il illustration of the band and in the back it has like our information. And um, yeah, that's just one way of my, like that's my way of combining like music and art and music and zines and um, yeah, and it's a great marketing tool, I think, also just because it yeah, gets so yeah. personal that, you know, somebody took a pen, a pencil and, and made something to, to be given um, almost back like the letter writing era, right? Getting that a letter in the mail was so special yeah. because somebody took the time. And, and I think that kind of interaction is important to still have. Um, yeah. So. What's cool about zines is like, all you need is paper and maybe a pen or a pencil or a glue stick. Um, so my favorite zine is the mini zine because really all you need is one sheet of paper. Yeah. So um, this is the mini zine, right? And this is another version of the mini zine, somebody's zine that I picked up at a, at a zine fest. And then I had um, a different size. This is like more of a medium size version mm -hmm. of, of the same type of zine, but with a larger sheet of paper. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to show some quick examples. Here's another one. This is like a more of a like a cardstock paper, or oh, okay. you know, okay, a little bit hardstock, okay. white color paper. Um, but anyways, so I printed like <laughs> I was going to use my 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 band's zine as as an example. Mm. So this is my original. Mm -hmm. So these are my original drawings of the zine and I just couldn't paste each single sheet on a regular, like, what is this? Eight and a half by 11 mm -hmm. sheet of paper. Mm -hmm. paper. Yeah. And then um, I photocopied that. All, so, you know, it's all just on the one sheet of paper. Yeah. Right. Um, and it's super easy. So you don't have to have the images printed or written on right, it. Right, right, right. Beforehand. Um, you can just have a regular sheet of paper so mm -hmm. like a blank sheet of paper sorry mm -hmm. and then you can add to it i think that's what you did right did yeah you so i haven't finished yet so and then know, i numbered added. mine just so i remember the direction so you know once i folded it i just put a little number so i know where it's the cover um which direction but okay so i took the paper and then yeah so, okay. mm -hmm. yeah so so easy way for you to know like what exactly what's going to be the cover what's going to be the back is to fold the sheet of paper first <laughs> mm -hmm. and um hopefully we could you could, people yeah, will be yeah. able to see the I have table right in front of me so i'm gonna like fold the paper and then show it mm -hmm. um so like horizontal mm -hmm. right you're gonna fold it in half like horizontally right that's mm -hmm. the first step yeah there you go you got it mm -hmm. so <laughs> i'm just gonna do it here real quick and then i think like another um folding process of doing it but this is usually the way i do it this is mm -hmm. the easiest way i find it then you're going to take that and you're going to fold it in half mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right just in half mm -hmm. so it's in half mm -hmm. and then i take that and then i fold it in half again mm -hmm. and then like the nicer you fold your fold it and the neater you fold it, you know, the, the better the yeah the nicer I have discovered what happens if I don't fold it. It won't be too <laughs> sloppy. I mean it's okay if it's a little sloppy. It doesn't yeah. matter. <laughs> but okay, so let's fold it in half again. Mm -hmm. And then from here, I unfold it and open it up. So you have all these eight folds, right? Mm -hmm. But from here, I'm gonna fold it in half this way mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and then here in the middle you see your fold you know there's a line so this is the folded side and on this side you want to um i use scissors mm -hmm. <laughs> but let's say you don't even have scissors let's say i'm gonna i'm gonna cut just from this is the folded side mm -hmm. Right, just want to make sure people don't get confused. So this is the folded side, and then I'm gonna cut a slit, mm -hmm. follow that line just to the middle here. Mm -hmm. Right, not all the way across, just to that middle part. 
So if you don't even have scissors on you and you just have the paper, you can totally like just mm -hmm. rip it, rip yeah. it with your fingers. Yeah. <laughs> I've done that before. Mm -hmm. I've done that before. Like just rip that part to the middle. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm going to fold it in half the way I had first originally folded it in half. And you're going to have that little opening mm -hmm. right in the middle. And you're going to like basically squish it together. Mm -hmm. You're going to squish it together. So it does like the zigzag thing. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to just fold it all up mm -hmm. together. Like it just collapses into a fold. <laughs> if you did it correctly, it should yeah. collapse. <laughs> Like origami <laughs> okay. yeah similar to origami and then so you have what you end up with is like a little booklet mm -hmm. of just this folded sheet of paper and um so you can have you can have your cover mm -hmm. and you'll have like you know two pages in there another two pages oh another two pages yeah. and then like the back yeah yeah so, so a total of like eight pages if <laughs> you did it correctly, right? Yeah, so, and it's it's just the folded sheet of paper, you know, it's just the way you fold it. And you can create, you know, your own zine that way, you just need one sheet of paper. And like you did it earlier today when you were working on your computer yeah. in your office, you were getting like fatigued and you just yeah. wanted to break. You just took a sheet of paper and you tried it yourself and you did it. And yeah, it was it was I'm sure very satisfying for you. And like you said, it was nice. Yes. And then if I was ready to take a break, fill it all up, I can make some quick photocopies and pass them out. Yeah. And then, then my joy that, with yeah. And then so, like, once you put your content in there, let's say I already put my content in there, you'll open it up, unfold it, mm -hmm. and you'll just make a copy of that sheet of paper. Yeah. And then, you know, you fold it back or you, you fold it like the way I just showed you. And then it, it becomes, you know, the end product. There you go. You mass produced a little self-published yeah. little book. That yeah. is so and awesome. I love it. And wow. I have another one, mini one that I made. Sorry, I just want to show That's this one. Okay, off. yeah. It was a tribute to one of my favorite drummers, Neil Purr of the band Rush. Yeah. Um, this one, I wasn't like expecting to create it, but he passed away at the beginning of 2020. And it affected me like really really like I I, I really yeah. felt you know sad right, when, right. when I heard of his passing because he was very influential to me mm -hmm. and so this is just my little tribute scene that I did to him and I just wrote like a little bio of him I drew a little illustration inspired by one of his songs because he would write the lyrics to the oh, great. songs and then here's the actual lyrics to one of the songs because he was such a great writer and intellectual and just like you know picture of him you know, it. and it was a nice way of me like dealing with his loss and like sharing like my love uh, and appreciation for him and just sharing it with others. And I like, love that, that because that we played that week, we, we handed it out to the audience. And, and, and if you can connect <laughs> with others who've lost, you know, someone. And I think, again, you know, we've gone through so much as a society and we're still going through so much that we need to find those outlets. Right. Like those ways to just let, you know, that little pain and try to ease those pains. Right. But I think through that creative uh, method uh, is a powerful way. I have beautiful, you know, tribute to to someone. Uh, yeah. Well, I thank you so much, Lisa, for giving us your time. Uh, I hope that maybe one day I can get you in and, and have you host a uh, workshop. That would be great. You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to try it out. See, see if others are interested hopefully we can like i said ignite that passion in students to share their voice i think i think they do want to yeah. we've had about uh, i was at a high school where over 40 kids signed up to do a spoken word on an open mic uh, night and it was one kid after another after another just sharing their raw stories and i'm thinking oh there's something here there's kids who want to share and let's give them a place to share so, uh, all right, Lisa, well, thank you so much. Uh, and I will, you know, hopefully get some more information from you if you do hear about some of these. If not, like we said here, the internet is your best friend to find more places to do scene. Thank you so much, Lisa. I hope you have a great, great rest of the afternoon. Thank you. You too, thanks. <laughs>